All right, so sw- switching right. switching gears here because you've been on Twitter, I've been following you, and and you've really been on the uh, Michael Flynn thing. I want to ask yeah. you, why are the handwritten notes in the documents that were released yesterday? Why are they so important, and and what does it tell us about? Or what should people see in there about the motives behind Flynn? Because it seems like a really, it's a really complicated story to a lot of people. So if you can no, distill it, it, it for them. You know, honestly, uh, you know, this you know, basically the first time I've said it sort of on public, I'm pretty loud anyway. I, you know, I, I take a position on a lot of stuff. I get pretty aggressive and I don't, you know, sort of toe the line. I, I sort of usually, you know, fly across it. Uh, and Michael Flynn, and it is probably the one issue that I've actually been reasonably quiet on until I saw this stuff starting to come out. Meaning, right. for the last few years, it's one of my biggest regrets, frankly, of the last few years. And it's because wow. even me, who's been on the receiving end of that bullshit, meaning, you know, I was the number two target of the Mueller investigation. I don't think anyone's contesting that. Right. Uh, I played it a little differently. I was a little bit more aggressive. I did everything my lawyers told me not to do. I was loud. I went on TV. (laughs) I fought back. I talked shit. Uh, You know, I I didn't ever like my lawyers were like, you're you're killing us here. And then two years later, they actually said you were right. They go, Don, you know what? You were actually right because the other side had no intention of trying to get to the truth. Right. It was always about that. So by you fighting back, you sort of put yourself in a position uh, where they were meaning I could have rolled over and died and they would have shown me exactly zero quarter. Right. Uh, and that's the way the left fights. They do a much better job of that than, you know, the right. Yeah. Uh, the right has a tendency of rolling over and dying uh, at the first sign of a little bit of resistance. And, you know, I think that's why my father's been able to get through some of those things. So my big regret with Flynn was not taking a stronger position in favor of him. Now, I knew they did it. I knew what they tried to do to me. Uh, I got a little bit luckier. Uh, in, in you know whatever it was, whether it was strategy, the willingness to push back, ability to pay insane amounts in legal fees, whatever it may be. Um, but when I see what happened now, I say, man, even me, even with that experience, I still had a hard time believing and reconciling that these guys could be that crooked, that they could go so far out of their way to set up a guy that is... Meaning, I was like, there has to be can like I, truth to this thing. Can I pause there has quick? to be something there, and that's why I don't want to go all in on this issue. Right. And now I'm seeing those notes, and it's like, what do we try to get? What's the objective? To try to get them to lie so we can fire them? Get them to lie so we can try to kill Trump? Get them to do this? To, I mean, the only objective they had no interest in was truth. Right. It had nothing to do with the truth. Yeah. It was all a setup. Now, again. You saw that from the page truck stuff. You saw it from Brennan, who can lie in front of Congress and Comey and all of these sanctimonious assholes. Uh, you see that? No, come on. You know, I, I'm amazed. He's been all pretty silent, as sanctimonious and, you know, as he is. He's been pretty quiet. And the fact that these guys aren't in jail when we start seeing what's coming out now, and by the way, what I can only imagine will come out in the next few weeks as they start to release these things. But what I want to know is, for the last few years, The FBI has been sitting on these things, knowing it's there, knowing it's exculpatory evidence, not giving it to Flynn's legal team. Basically, Mm. if it wasn't for his legal team being aggressive and being like, wait a second, there's got to be more to this and pushing and pushing and pushing, this guy would have signed his life away because they presumably they went after his kid like they did to me, trying to hurt my father. I mean, it was it was a very similar deal. And, you know, I, I wish I would have been more aggressive about it, but it was even hard for me as just a reasonable American right. to right. assume that these people could be such corrupt. Well, and let me let me ask you this. Do you think it was hard for you as well? Because uh, unlike yourself, I mean, Flynn effectively ad- admitted guilt. But that's my point. And then, you know, yeah. because he was now again, whether he was railroaded, whatever it was he, he was doing, you know, they tried making him seem like a bad actor because, you know, he was a general for 30 years. and He gave a speech in Turkey and they paid him. Oh. Like, I don't know, you know, again, <laughs> if you're that guy, you know, you work your life, the whole, now you have an ability to do that. Like, it was nothing wrong with it, but they made it seem like it was so wrong that I was like, man, I don't know if I can jump in on this. Like, uh, it, it's just, it, it's truly disgusting. It, it's really disheartening. Yeah. And again, this is not a reflection on the door kickers at the FBI. I always got to make that clear because then, you know, CNN runs the guy, Donald Trump Jr. hates Agents. I don't hate agents. I hate the guys that don't carry guns. Right. The bureaucrats at the top, the guys that got there by being the biggest dipshits 
Uh, not the door kickers. <laughs> you know, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, Dungeon. I mean this. You are like the uh, the Kim Jong Un to your dad's Kim, but I mean that in the best way. Like you are all the good parts of your dad, except Kim Jong Il had no redeeming qualities. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. But you are like turned up to an eleven in that you're like, you know what? I don't really care. I don't really need to be appreciated by the media. I please run. I'm not a politician. I don't have to play in that game. I'm not in the White House. I, you know, I can say what so many of us are actually thinking. And I just don't care if they try to cancel me. They've been trying to shit. They've been trying to throw me in jail. Like you know, getting canceled is like the least of my concerns. <laughs> right. Uh, Although in know, jail, you know, getting I, canceled I is a euphemism for what happens with your bunk mate. So I would still keep you know keep your head on a swivel. But I tell you what, I would <laughs> chop off my arms and legs. I would be you. I would just be nubbling on the show if you were to run for governor of Michigan and kick that Whitmer out. That is a fight that I would so love to see. I know it's just it's one of those matchups like a gorilla versus a grizzly bear. But oh my God, that's a dream of mine.